It's finally time to hear what these 3D printed speakers sound like. Let's get into it. Welcome back. Uh, yeah, it's Joel, 3D printed speakers. Well, more accurately, 3D printed speaker enclosures. In part one, I showed you a base printed on the 3D platform 300 series Workbench Pro and the issues that I had printing it. In part two, I showed you another base printed on the G Max 2 and two of the top parts printed on the CraftBot machines and the faces printed on the 3D platform 300 series Workbench Pro. That's fun. In a video covering prints from the Daedalus printer, I showed the printed caps, the final printed pieces needed. So here's what's left. We have to glue the pieces all together. We have to wire the speakers. We have to add sand. We have to assemble the crossover circuits. And then we have to break in the woofer at 50 hertz. And then we get to play some Maker's Muse music. Honestly, we have a lot on our plate Let's get to work. To glue the top and base parts together, I used epoxy. I wanted something that would act as a gap filler in case the surfaces weren't mating together perfectly. I also used epoxy to glue the face pieces on for similar reasons. The epoxy cured, and in the end, it was definitely the right choice. Speaker wiring was fairly simple and just required a little soldering. I prepped up the enclosures by adding polyester stuffing in the space behind where the speakers would be. There is a woofer and there is a tweeter per speaker. Wires soldered and fed through the enclosure to the back. I used Bluetack putty to help ensure an airtight seal between the enclosure and the speakers and some screws holding them in place were the final step. These speakers will have the crossover externally, so four posts were screwed to a special 3D printed part in the back. I soldered the wires from the woofer and the tweeter to the posts, then used Bluetack putty and screws for a tight seal. I've soldered circuits before, but this was my first crossover circuit. Simon put together a fantastic tutorial showing me how he would go about doing it, and that was invaluable. Thank you, Simon. I tinned wires and followed Simon's video instructions to connect the coils, capacitors, and resistors. Uh, listen, I know my soldering work isn't pretty, but just like me, it doesn't have to be pretty to work well. Sand is added to the speakers too, at least from what I've read. Tighten and control the bass response. I sourced my sand from the garden section at Home Depot. <laughs> I did check the reptile section at the local pet store, thinking that sand would be finer or drier or both. It's also astronomically more expensive, so I think I made the right choice. Tape was used around the edges to create a funnel of sorts. Sand was added to the top, and a little shaking action got the sand down where it needed to go. Once there was enough sand, the top part was added, and I convinced it to go into place. I got this sweet receiver at the secondhand store for 50 bucks, and I think it will help power some tunes here at the studio. I connected the computer speaker out to the receiver, I loaded in the 50 hertz tone into media player. I made sure repeat was set and then I left for the night. Oh, you noticed some tape on this one right here, right? When I set the 50 hertz tone to play, I could tell we had a bit of an air leak where there just must not have been enough epoxy. I used duct tape and that seemed to take care of it. And with that in mind, this means we are ready. I've got the speakers up. The crossover's connected, the receiver wired up, and the Maker's Muse special track loaded up in five, four, three, two, one. Ah, okay, so that wasn't Maker's Muse. That was the first sounds from Mars. Had to play that.
Thank you, Matt Damon. Okay, seriously, no joking around, no more. I just had to get in a little Mars thing there, but this is an unreleased track by Angus over at Maker's Muse. It is called This Is 3D Printing Nerd, and uh, I'm gonna turn it up just a little bit because, because why not? Here we go, for the first time ever, Maker's Muse, This Is 3D Printing Nerd, have a listen. That's, that is wonderful. Angus did a fantastic job. Thank you for that, Angus. Boy, what a way to break in some wonderful speakers here. I can't believe how good these sound. We even have it turned up all the way. We might have to do that. They work. They really, really work. This is it. All right, well. Thanks to everybody for making this possible. Let me know what you want to hear played on these. Maybe we can put together a compilation. I just, I can't believe they work. It's finally done. It's finally done. Simon, thanks for the design. These are a, a, an amazing design. They look cool. Some people said Day of the Tentacle. Some people said uh, Patrick from SpongeBob. Either way, I think they look great. Uh, but listen, 3D printed speakers themselves, those are always going to be Polymate 3D. And I have the kit and that is in the queue to get done. Also, 3D printed speaker enclosures. Listen, we're all just playing in the Hexibase uh, playground. Like, go subscribe to Hexibase and just be blown away by the incredible stuff he is doing. I will put a link to his channel down below, but seriously, uh, severely underrated. If you love audio and 3D printing, Hexibase is the one you wanna follow. Well, listen, thanks for coming along on this journey. I'm really glad that everything worked out. I know it doesn't look as good as it could, but listen, you know what? Part of making is the journey. And I think the journey here proves that it was worth it. And the next time we take what we learned and we make it even better. <sighs> if you've made it this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more, fight for a cause you believe in, practice kindness aggressively, and as always, high five. Bam, yeah. I'm gonna play it again. <laughs>